Welcome to Grade 10 Science Performance Standard 1 for the Most Essential Learning Competency 1 for Week 1 to 3 of the First Quarter Lesson. This video presentation could be utilized as a supplement instructional material for the learners to be able to demonstrate ways to ensure disaster preparedness during earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions. Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, commenting, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. This is for educational or teaching purposes. <laughs> How to prepare for an earthquake. Yeah, boy. Earthquake preparedness preparedness refers to activities we do prior to an earthquake to be ready to respond to and recover from significant ground shaking. When it comes to earthquakes, there are simple things you can do to improve your chances of survival and recovery. Anything you do today will be like making a deposit in your survivability savings account for withdrawal in tough times. At a minimum, you should be prepared to be isolated and on your own for at least three days and nights. There will likely be the loss of utilities after a disaster. It is possible the power will be out, water may be scarce, gas lines may break, phones and cell towers could become inoperable, roads might be impassable, etc. Your only source of news may well be the car radio, assuming your local radio station has a working generator. There might not be medical assistance for days. To begin preparing your home and family, number 1. Identify potential hazards in your home and begin to fix them. Number 2. Create a disaster preparedness plan. Number 3. Create disaster kits. Number 4. Identify your building's potential weaknesses and begin to fix them. Number 5. Protect yourself during earthquake shaking. Number 6. After the quake, check for injuries and damage. Number 7. When safe, continue to follow your disaster preparedness plan. Prepare your workplace. Preparing your workplace is just as important as preparing your home. There are many ways to improve your safety in the event of an earthquake. Here are just a few suggestions. Number 1. Determine if your workplace is in an area at risk for earthquake. Number 2. Be familiar with your company's emergency plan. Number 3. Know evacuation routes and locations deemed safe. Number 4. Keep a pack of personal supplies, including walking shoes, that can be grabbed quickly and easily. Number 5. Keep a list of emergency numbers handy. Earthquake preparedness for teachers and schools, while earthquakes have occurred throughout history, our knowledge and understanding of preparing for them is much more recent. Through planning and education, we are now in a position to ensure the current and upcoming generations make earthquake preparedness a regular part of their routine. As actions from learning to drop, cover, and hold on, to securing furniture in their homes becomes the norm, students can take this information and teach their families and friends how to be prepared. As we learn more, our partners are applying that knowledge to assist teachers, parents, and schools in the education of students of all ages and abilities by providing lesson plans, curriculum, activities, games, materials, publications and a multitude of other resources. While earthquakes have occurred throughout history, our knowledge and understanding of preparing for them is much more recent. Through planning and education, we are now in a position to ensure the current and upcoming generations make earthquake preparedness a regular part of their routine. 
as actions from learning to drop, cover, and hold on, to securing furniture in their homes becomes the norm, students can take this information and teach their families and friends how to be prepared. As we learn more, our partners are applying that knowledge to assist teachers, parents, and schools in the education of students of all ages and abilities by providing lesson plans, curriculum, activities, games, materials, publications and a multitude of other resources. In the Philippines according to Relief Web, in its article written by Aurora J. Casimpan on September 11, 2012 there are 29 towns in East Visayas identified as earthquake high-risk areas, the presence of active Philippine fault zone and line aimants have put 29 municipalities in eastern Visayas as high risk to earthquakes. This was revealed by the Philippine Volcanology and Seismology, Philvox, in the region where Myra Dolina, Philvox Science Research Analyst said that while recent movements of the fault lines have been recorded, the intensity were not really felt by residents because the intensity was lower. Philvox disclosed that the central Leyte Fault forming part of the 1,200 km Philippine Fault Zone stretches in some areas of Mahaplug, Ormac City, Cananga, Capucan, Javier, MacArthur, La Paz, Abayag, Buran, Leyte, and Albura and where the crossing faults list as earthquake-prone areas the towns of Sogod, Libagon, St. Bernard, Lilon, and San Ricardo in southern Leyte. The towns of Taft, San Julian, Sulat, Buronan City, Balangiga, and Lawan in eastern Samar as well as the towns of Marabat, Basi Pinabacdeo and Hinabangan, Samar are subject to jolts by the movements of southern Samar line aimant. Philvox also informed that the northern Samar line aimant traverses the towns of Allen, Victoria, and San Isidro. It was learned that Philvox is in the process of making hazard maps for Bilirin close to the Philippine fault zone and some areas in Samar near the central Samar line aimant. According to Philvox, their office and some concerned government agencies have been disseminating the data to the local government units since 2007. In the Philippines an earthquake is known as Lindal, tsunami and earthquakes can happen anytime around the Pacific Ring of Fire, from California up and around Alaska down through Japan, Taiwan, the Philippines, and Indonesia. The Philippines is no stranger to earthquakes, the Philippine archipelago was largely created by the tectonic squabble between the Eurasian and Pacific plates, forming the Philippine plate as a distinct entity. The majority of Philippine earthquakes occur somewhere near the Philippines' Pacific East Coast, especially the east coasts of Mindanao and Samar, where a significant tectonic subduction zone has created the second deepest ocean trench in the world, named the Philippine Deep or the Philippine Trench, with a depth greater than 34,000 feet. On August 31, 2012, this area of the Philippines received a 7.6 magnitude earthquake along the Philippine Trench, east of Samar Island. Just as in California, USA, a measurable earthquake in the Philippines, greater than magnitude 2.5, occurs almost every day somewhere, but most people are completely unaware of them. In the 10 years from 2008 to 2015 only three earthquakes were felt slightly in Metro Manila. All three earthquakes resulted from seismic activity in the West Philippine Sea, along the geological fault that runs north, south off the west coast of Zimbal's province. It is rare to have an earthquake in the Philippines that measures greater than magnitude 6.0. The last significantly destructive earthquake in the Philippines occurred on October 15, 2013, beneath the west coast of Boal Island. The Boal earthquake was measured as magnitude 7.2 causing substantial damage across the island, and cited as the cause of 222 fatalities. Damage was apparent to buildings in the provinces of Boal and Cebu. Remember, earthquakes do not kill, buildings kill, the Marikina Fault linked to Marikina Valley Fault system If you live in the national capital region you should be interested. The most significant, historic earthquake zone, geological fault, in the Philippines is located just 10 kilometers east of Manila City and is known as the Marikina Valley Fault. Yeah, boy.
to prepare for the whole family that can be used during or after a disaster in case of tsunami. Tsunamis are large ocean waves generated by major earthquakes beneath the ocean floor or major landslides into the ocean. Rising to several feet or higher, they can strike the coast with devastating force. People on beaches or in low coastal areas, such as estuaries and rivers, need to be aware that a tsunami could arrive within minutes of a severe earthquake, and the danger period can continue for many hours. Tsunamis can occur any time of year, day, or night. Top tips to escape a tsunami, go as high and as far as you can, ideally to a spot 100 feet above sea level or 2 miles away. Every foot inland or upward may make a difference. If you can see the wave, you are too close for safety. Know the difference. A tsunami warning means a tsunami may have been generated and could be close to your area. A tsunami watch means a tsunami has not yet been verified but could exist and may be as little as an hour away. Before a tsunami prepare in advance, assembling an emergency preparedness kit. Creating a household evacuation plan that includes your pets. Staying informed about your community's risk and response plans. Educating your family on how to use the Safe and Well website. Download the emergency app for iPhone or for Android. Protecting your family talk about tsunamis with your family so that everyone knows what to do in a tsunami situation. Discussing ahead of time helps reduce fear, particularly for younger children. Check at your workplace and your children's schools and daycare centers to learn if they are in a tsunami hazard area or inundation zone. Learn about their evacuation plans, especially the designated spot where you will pick up your children. Plan evacuation routes from your home, school, workplace, and other places you could be where tsunamis present a risk. If possible try to pick areas 100 feet above sea level or 2 miles inland. If you cannot get that high or far, go as high or far as you can. Every foot inland or upward may make a difference. You should be able to reach the highest ground possible on foot within 15 minutes. Practice your evacuation routes. Familiarity may save your life. Be able to follow your escape route at night and during inclement weather. Talk to your insurance agent. Homeowners policies do not cover flooding from a tsunami. National Food Insurance Program covers tsunami damage, but your community must participate in the program. Protecting your pets and animals Prepare a pet emergency kit for your companion animals. Ensure that any outbuildings, pastures, or corrals are protected in the same way as your home. Fence lines should enable your animals to move to higher ground in the event of a tsunami. Protecting your home Avoid building or living in buildings within several hundred feet of the coastline. These areas are more likely to experience damage from tsunamis, strong winds, or coastal storms if you do live in a coastal area, elevate your home to help reduce damage. Most tsunami waves are less than 10 feet, 3 meters. Take precautions to prevent flooding. Have an engineer check your home and advise about ways to make it more resistant to tsunami water. There may be ways to divert waves away from your property. Improperly built walls could make your situation worse. Make a list of items to bring inside in the event of a tsunami watch or warning being issued for your area. But remember, you may need to evacuate immediately, don't risk your safety to save your belongings. During a tsunami if you feel a strong coastal earthquake drop, cover, and hold on to protect yourself from the earthquake. When the shaking stops, gather members of your household and review your evacuation plan. A tsunami may be coming within minutes. Use a weather radio or stay tuned to a Coast Guard emergency frequency station, or a local radio or television station for updated emergency information. Follow instructions issued by local authorities. Recommended evacuation routes may be different from the one you planned, or you may be advised to climb higher. If you hear an official tsunami warning or detect signs of a tsunami, evacuate at once. A tsunami warning is issued when authorities are certain that a tsunami threat exists, and there may be little time to get out. Take your emergency preparedness kit. Having supplies will make you more comfortable during the evacuation. If you evacuate, take your animals with you. If it is not safe for you, it is not safe for them. Get to higher ground as far inland as possible. Watching a tsunami from the beach or cliffs could put you in grave danger. 
if you can see the wave, you are too close to escape it. Avoid downed power lines and stay away from buildings and bridges from which heavy objects might fall during an aftershock. Stay away until local officials tell you it is safe. A tsunami is a series of waves that may continue for hours. Do not assume that after one wave the danger is over. The next wave may be larger than the first one. Avoid downed power lines and stay away from buildings and bridges from which heavy objects might fall during an aftershock. Stay away until local officials tell you it is safe. A tsunami is a series of waves that may continue for hours. Do not assume that after one wave the danger is over. The next wave may be larger than the first one. Avoid downed power lines and stay away from buildings and bridges from which heavy objects might fall during an aftershock. Stay away until local officials tell you it is safe. A tsunami is a series of waves that may continue for hours. Do not assume that after one wave the danger is over. The next wave may be larger than the first one. Staying safe after a tsunami Staying safe after a tsunami If you do nothing else, one let friends and family know you're safe. Register yourself as safe on the safe and well website. 2. If evacuated, return only when authorities say it is safe to do so. 3. Continue listening to local news or a NOAA weather radio for updated information and instructions. 4. If people around you are injured, practice check, call, care. Check the scene to be sure it's safe for you to approach, call for help, and if you are trained, provide first aid to those in need until emergency responders can arrive. Caring for yourself and loved ones avoid disaster areas. Your presence might hamper rescue and other emergency operations and put you at further risk from the residual effects of the tsunami, such as contaminated water, crumbled roads, landslides, mudflows, and other hazards. Expect aftershocks if the earthquake was very large, magnitude 8 to 9 plus on the Richter scale, and located nearby. Some aftershocks could be as large as magnitude 7 plus and capable of generating another tsunami. It may take days, weeks, or months for the aftershocks to subside. Pay attention to how you and your loved ones are experiencing and handling stress. Promote emotional recovery by following these tips. Watch animals closely and keep them under your direct control. Help people who require additional assistance infants, elderly people, those without transportation, large families who may need additional help in an emergency situation, people with disabilities, and the people who care for them. Pay attention to how you and your loved ones are experiencing and handling stress. Promote emotional recovery by following these tips. Watch animals closely and keep them under your direct control. Help people who require additional assistance infants, elderly people, those without transportation, large families who may need additional help in an emergency situation, people with disabilities, and the people who care for them. Tsunami facts alert occasionally, tsunamis can form walls of water, known as tsunami bores, but tsunamis normally have the appearance of a fast rising and fast receding flood. They can be similar to a tide cycle occurring in just 10 to 60 minutes instead of 12 hours. Another fact for tsunami aid tsunami is a series of waves. Often the initial wave is not the largest. In fact, the largest wave may not occur for several hours. There may also be more than one series of tsunami waves if a very large earthquake triggers local landslides which in turn trigger additional tsunamis. Next fact tsunamis are often most destructive in bays and harbors, not just because of the waves but because of the violent currents they generate in local waterways. Tsunamis are least destructive in deep, open ocean waters. Next fact tsunamis are often most destructive in bays and harbors, not just because of the waves but because of the violent currents they generate in local waterways. Tsunamis are least destructive in deep, open ocean waters. And another tsunami facts tidal waves are regular ocean waves, and are caused by the tides. These waves are caused by the interaction of the pull of the moon's gravity on the Earth. A tidal wave is a term used in common folklore to mean the same thing as a tsunami, but is not the same thing.
how to prepare and protect yourself and your family from the dangers of volcanic eruption, be prepared either to shelter or to evacuate. Develop an evacuation plan and a sheltering plan for yourself, your family, and others in your household. Review the plans and make sure that everyone understands them, if you haven't already done so, put together an emergency supply kit. Supplies should include the following, flashlight and extra batteries first aid kit and manual emergency food and water manual, non-electric, can opener essential medicines sturdy shoes respiratory, breathing, protection eye protection, goggles, battery powered radio, exposure to ash can harm your health, particularly the respiratory, breathing, tract. To protect yourself while you are outdoors or while you are cleaning up ash that has gotten indoors, use an N95 disposable respirator, also known as an air purifying respirator. N95 respirators can be purchased at businesses such as hardware stores. It is important to follow directions for proper use of this respirator, if you don't have an N95 respirator, you can protect yourself by using a nuisance dust mask as a last resort, but you should stay outdoors for only short periods while dust is falling. Nuisance dust masks can provide comfort and relief from exposure to relatively non-hazardous contaminants such as pollen, but they do not offer as much protection as an N95 respirator. Cleanup or emergency workers may need a different type of breathing protection, if you are told to evacuate follow authorities instructions if they tell you to leave the area. Though it may seem safe to stay at home and wait out an eruption, doing so could be very dangerous. Volcanoes spew hot, dangerous gases, ash, lava, and rock that are powerfully destructive, preparing to evacuate tune in the radio or television for volcano updates. Listen for disaster sirens and warning signals. Review your emergency plan and gather your emergency supplies. Be sure to pack at least a one-week supply of prescription medications. Prepare an emergency kit for your vehicle with food, flares, booster cables, maps, tools, a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, sleeping bags, a flashlight, batteries, etc. Fill your vehicle's gas tank. If no vehicle is available, make arrangements with friends or family for transportation, or follow authorities' instructions on where to obtain transportation. Place vehicles under cover, if at all possible, put livestock in an enclosed area. Plan ahead to take pets with you, but be aware that many emergency shelters cannot accept animals. Fill your clean water containers. Fill sinks and bathtubs with water as an extra supply for washing. Adjust the thermostat on refrigerators and freezers to the coolest possible temperature. If the power goes out, food will stay cooler longer, as you evacuate take only essential items with you, including at least a one-week supply of prescription medications, if you have time, turn off the gas, electricity, and water, disconnect appliances to reduce the likelihood of electrical shock when power is restored, make sure your automobile's emergency kit is ready. Follow designated evacuation routes others may be blocked and expect heavy traffic and delays, if you are told to take shelter where you are keep listening to your radio or television until you are told all is safe or you are told to evacuate. Local authorities may evacuate specific areas at greatest risk in your community. Close and lock all windows and outside doors, turn off all heating and air conditioning systems and fans. Close the fireplace damper. Organize your emergency supplies and make sure household members know where the supplies are, make sure the radio is working. Go to an interior room without windows that is above ground level. Bring your pets with you, and be sure to bring additional food and water supplies for them, it is ideal to have a hardwired, non-portable, telephone in the room you select. Call your emergency contact a friend or family member who does not live near the volcano and have the phone available if you need to report a life-threatening condition. Remember that telephone equipment may be overwhelmed or damaged during an emergency, steps you can take to minimize impacts to your family and home in the event of volcanic eruption. Know where the active volcanoes are in your area and how close you are to them. To review your homeowner's insurance policy, and if necessary, increase your level of coverage to ensure you are covered adequately. 3. Obtain proper respiratory protection such as an air purifying respirator, also referred to as an N95 disposable respirator. This can be found at your local hardware store. 4. If there are disaster warning sirens in your area be aware of what they sound like. 
When a volcanic eruption occurs, you'll want and need to listen for them. 5. Create an emergency evacuation plan with your family. Review it often so that each person knows what to do, how to find each another if you're apart, and how to contact neighbors and slash or emergency services if you cannot get away from the property using your own transportation. 6. Create an emergency kit for your car including maps, tools, a first aid kit, a fire extinguisher, flares, additional non-perishable food, booster cables, sleeping bags and slash or emergency blankets, and a flashlight. Yeah, boy! Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the notification bell for an updates by Hitchhikers TV's upcoming videos. God bless and please stay safe and healthy.